Why News with Angelo Castro the Third, William Theo, and Darlene Basingan. Good evening, Customs Commissioner Nicanor Faildon sees no irregularities on employing former professional basketball and volleyball players and deploying them as customs agents. Ayoko Miguel will tell us why. Customs Chief Nicanor Feldon claims they have carefully studied the feasibility of employing former athletes as technical assistants for special activities of the Bureau and even consulted the Commission on Audit who also said there was nothing wrong about the plan. Among the former PBA players who are now in the payroll of the BOC as technical assistants for special activities and intelligence officers are Kenneth Doremdes, Marlo Aquino, Edward Joseph or EJ File, Jerome Ejercito and Bertson Franco. Also included in the list is the famous volleyball player Eliza Valdez. Feldon clarifies that these personalities are under contract of services and are not regular employees of the agency. The BOC chief also explains that these names are qualified to the position under Customs Special Activities Program. This is a group of effective communicators uh, to bridge this gap between the Bureau of Customs and the Filipino people. This is not something that we are hiding. I do not see why some sectors are trying to put some malice in this very, very necessary program for the Bureau. But because these athletes are now disclosed as belonging to the Intel Group of the Customs, the Chief is now considering transferring them to another post. BOC Chief of Staff Attorney Mandy Anderson also says that the BOC has a mandate to take in employees for their personal development and training. Congress itself grants us budget for personnel development and training. Kenneth Duremdes, on the other hand, says that aside from playing basketball, he also has other duties in the office of the BOC Chief. Ang pinakamagandang role namin today is uh, tutulungan namin itong Bureau, again, na uh, ma-improve yung image. Ang... Ang basketball for us is uh, secondary na lang. The BOC Transformers is one of the most active teams in the UNTV Cup and is bent on clinching the championship for them to help their chosen beneficiary. They also see their participation to the said League of Public Servants as an opportunity for them to unite their employees and support their team. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Lawmakers who pushed for the free tuition bill for state universities and colleges express gratitude to the president for signing the bill into law. Maki Libradilla will tell us why. Deputy Executive Secretary Minardo Guevara says President Rodrigo Duterte signed last night the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act following a meeting with his economic advisors. I uh, am pleased to announce that last night, August 3, 2017, the President signed into law the enrolled bill. Under the new law, the government will be able to provide free tuition to students of state universities and colleges or SUCs and even those enrolled in vocational schools across the country. Although the chief executive's economic team opposes the said measure, Guevara says the president believes signing it would have a huge impact to the country's development. Free tertiary education in state universities and colleges is a very strong pillar or cornerstone of the president's social development policy. So he weighed everything and came to the conclusion that the long-term benefits that will be derived from a well-developed uh, tertiary education will definitely outweigh any possible short-term uh, budgetary uh, challenges. Senator Bam Aquino, the principal sponsor and co-author of the measure, thanked the president for approving the free SUC tuition bill. Senator Joseph Victor Ejercito says deserving students will finally have the chance to go to college for free. For Senator Vicente Soto III, this is an important day for the country's educational system while Senator Francis Escudero notes the new law can be considered as among the legacies of the Duterte administration. Mr. Duterte's approval of the SUC bill will prompt Congress to make some changes in the 2018 proposed budget to include funding for the new legislation. 
Makilibradilia, UN TV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Students and teachers consider President Rodrigo Duterte's signing of the free tuition law a triumph for the education sector. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Nagpupugay tayo kay Pangulong Duterte dahil uh, pinakinggan po niya at pinanigan ang uh, panawagan, ang tunay na panawagan ng uh, mga kabataan, ng mamamayan. Teachers and students celebrate now that the free tuition for state universities and colleges has been enacted into law. Students like Aima Domado is relieved to finally have a source of fund for her tuition and other school fees. The law will also save her 9,000 pesos each semester. Kahit ganun po kasi, medyo mahirap pa rin po maghanap ng pera pambayad. Meanwhile, Zen Jimenez will save huge amount of up to 30,000 pesos each semester under the Free Tuition Act. Maraming kastusin, tapos yung lola ko rin may sakit, uh, pinagkakasya, parang sakto-sakto talaga yung budget namin. According to Representative Sara Ilago of the Kabataan Party List, Around 1.8 million students will benefit from the new law. Of the said number, 50,000 goes to different campuses of the University of the Philippines system across the country. UP Chancellor Michael Tan reveals that the state university is collecting around 1 billion pesos from tuition and miscellaneous fee each school term, which will no longer be the case now. Ngayon, completely free na yan. Mas malaki pa subsidy, mas malaki talaga ang kailangan gawin. Uh, you owe it to the Filipino people no? with this new law. Meanwhile, the group of teachers and students vows to be vigilant and closely monitor the drafting of the Loss Implementing Rules and Regulation or IRR and its funding. In the latest budget hearing in Congress, the government has not allotted any amount for the free tuition. Act Teachers Party List Representative Antonio Tino said the government is now obliged to allocate fund for the loss implementation which includes an initial of 15 billion peso fund and another 10 billion pesos for subsidies for private colleges and universities. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The administration's tax reform package may possibly be enacted into law in the first quarter of 2018. However, the provisions on excise taxes on, petro on petroleum products and sweetened beverages still face controversy. Mel Maribuhok will tell us why. Pinakamalapit na pwedeng maisakatuparan nito at maisabatas, when will that be? Well, ang, Base ang, sa gusto, schedule nyo ang gusto nila is, early, is late by, by the end of this year, pero tingin ko more of early, first quarter next year. The tax reform package of the administration may progress in the Senate this year. In the Get It Straight with Daniel Rasson's interview, Senate Committee on Ways and Means Chairperson Sani Angara says they can complete the hearing in the committee level by September. He cannot promise, however, that the Senate will pass the whole version of the tax reform bill. Hindi talaga mangyayari yun. Pero yung diwa nung uh, panukala na kailangan tulungan ng ating gobyerno, uh, palakasin yung pondo niya at bigyan ng uh, uh, tax relief o uh, tulong yung ating mga pangkaraniwang empleyado na hindi kumikita ng malaki. Agara adds that the committee is still challenged by some controversial provisions of the bill. These include the 2 to 3 peso increase in the excise tax on petroleum products in the first implementation of the law and the levy on sweetened beverages. Where in one liter bottle of a cola drink which cost 27 pesos will be sold at 38 pesos once the bill is enacted. The senator wants this amended. Uh -huh. Eh sabi nga nila, this is a health measure. Mm -hmm. Eh paano naging health measure yan kung pareho ang trato? Depend hindi nakabase sa laman na asukal. The senator assures that they will look into the tax efficiency collections of the Bureau of Internal Revenue with the passage of the tax reform package. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Meanwhile, amid the controversy, Commissioner Faildon discounted politics as the reason behind all the criticisms that the Bureau of Customs is facing at present. Faildon says what he wants to focus on right now is for the Filipino people to know the truth, especially regarding the shipment of the billion pesos worth of illegal drugs discovered to have entered the country. In fact, to prove his intention, the commissioner says he already asked the president to create a specific body that will investigate the said matter. I want the truth to come out. 
the, the Filipino people deserves the truth here. That's why I even wrote a letter to the president for the president to form a, a, a body that will really investigate this up to the last detail para talaga ma malaman ng taong bayan ano ba talaga ang katotohanan nito. Uh, hindi lang yung uh, katotohanan, pero pati na rin yung masaliksik kung bakit ganito kahina ang kakayahan ng Bureau of Customs. In other news, a lawyer is now gathering more evidence for a complaint he plans to file against Supreme Court Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Grace Kassin will tell us why. Attorney Larry Gadon was supposed to file his impeachment complaint before the House of Representatives last Wednesday against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. However, he says some lawmakers he talked to have requested something to him. Nung oras na yun, eh, meron na agad uh, dalawang gustong pumirma. Pero sabi nila sa akin, mas maganda ito kung maraming kaming pipirma, mga at least mga 20. The lawyer says the basis he would cite in his impeachment complaint is the alleged misdeclaration of Sereno of her properties in her statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth of Sal N. But Majority Floor Leader Rudy Farina says the allegations cited in the complaint have no concrete basis. This is why he advises the lawyer to ask documents from the Supreme Court that would prove his accusations against the country's top magistrate. Committee on Justice Chairman Ray Umali initially noted that such a complaint would only cause delays on the discussion of proposed laws that the Congress should pass. Madi-derail ang, uh, ang aming legislative agenda, yung gusto natin na uh, ma-reform ma yung criminal justice system, again, will be uh, put to the back seat. Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Volunteers Against Crime and Corruption, or VACC, requested the Supreme Court to release copies of the documents which will support the impeachment complaint filed against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno. Roderick Mendoza will tell us why. The complainants in the impeachment bid against Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno wrote the Supreme Court to request copies of the documents mentioned in their complaint. These include the order for the creation of Judiciary Decentralized Office and the reopening of the Regional Court Administration Office in Visayas, as well as the Memorandum of Justice Teresita Leonardo de Castro questioning the appointment of Philippine Mediation Center Chief and the travel allowances given to Serenus staff. According to VACC's legal counsel, they decided to file a formal request so Congress will no longer have to subpoena the documents. We do this the, the right way and the least uh, intrusive way, that is uh, by uh, pleading the court to issue these documents. These are documents anyway are already identified in our complaint. This is in the interest of justice. This was done before during the impeachment of then Chief Justice Renato Corona. When the SE and Bank released the documents subpoenaed by the lower house. We believe in the in the high sense of justice of our Supreme Court and Bank. That's why we took this initiative to plead the court and bank for these documents. The lawyer also said some lawmakers are already studying the complaint and there is a big possibility some will endorse it. Roderick Mendoza, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The military expressed confidence that the crisis in Marawi City will be over soon. Lea Ilagan tells us why. AFP Public Affairs Office Chief Colonel Edgar Arevalo says the military operation against the terrorist group in Marawi City is now on its final stage. This is based on the assessment made by AFP Chief of Staff General Eduardo Año during his recent visit to the troops in the city. Masasabi natin, and even to the satisfaction of the Chief of Staff himself and the members of the J staff who were with him, doon sa pagbisita na ito, yung ipirinisent ang plano sa kanya, uh, maganda and uh, he was optimistic na matatapos na ito natin sa lalong madaling panahon. However, Arevalo refuses to give a specific deadline so as not to add pressure to the government troops on the ground. It is very clear to our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines and policemen there na ang ating mission ay kailangan nating matapos sa lalong madaling panahon now, without uh, having to cause undue or unnecessary loss of lives and limbs. 
The ongoing battle in Marawi City has now come to its 73rd day, with current number reaching to 45 civilians killed, 1,724 rescued, and 600 high-powered firearms seized, 119 killed on the side of the government, and 522 on the side of the terrorist. Leia Ilagan, UN TV News and Rescue, Camp Aguinaldo. Marawi City is not yet 100% safe, although the military has already seized control of most of its parts. Maki Libradilla tells us why. The armed forces of the Philippines says residents are still not allowed to return to Marawi City, although the tension there has already subsided. AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Restituto Padilla says improvised explosive devices planted by members of the terrorist Maute group are still scattered in the city. Because of this, Arevalo says the residents are not yet allowed to return in their hometown. The constant request of the residents to come back to their uh, homes to, in order to start building their lives is something that we are all raring to give but we cannot as of the moment because of these challenges. Padilla also appealed to the residents to give the military more time to finish its clearing operations. Nagsabi po tayo na pwede na po kayong bumalik at pwede na pong isaayos lahat. Makakasigurado kami na ang pagbibigay ng abisong yan ay uh, batay po sa pagkakaroon ng pagkakompletong pag-clear sa buong uh, kalooban ng Marawi. The AFP did not set a deadline for its troops to finish the operation against the terrorists. But he adds that they strictly follow the order of the president to consider first and foremost the safety of the hostages of the terrorist group and as much as possible to prevent the further loss of lives. Makili Bradilia, UN TV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The police and military arrested a suspected bomb expert of the New People's Army or NPA in the town of Quezon, Bukidnon. This after the encounter of the members of the 43rd Infantry Battalion, Philippine Army and Quezon Police Station with the rebels. The suspects were identified as Ruel Kalolot, the alleged bomb expert in a certain Ramil Kalolot. Confiscated from the suspects were 19 improvised explosive devices, a small version of rocket-propelled grenade, a caliber 40 gun, ammunition of AK-47 rifle, bomb paraphernalia, and two laptops containing the alleged plan of the NPA to attack northern Mindanao. The Land Transportation, Franchising, and Regulatory Board belies Uber's claim that it is covered by the Passenger Accident Management Insurance Agency or PAMI. Joe Anano tells us why. On Uber po, um, just to be clear po, all Uber trips, all Uber cars have PAMI insurance. Kahit po wala po silang provisional authority or CPC, covered po sila ng government-mandated PAMI insurance. This is what Uber Legal Counsel Attorney Eve Gonzalez claimed in yesterday's Senate hearing on Transport Network Vehicle Service. A land transportation, franchising, and regulatory board investigation, however, shows that Uber is no longer covered by the Passenger Accident Management Insurance Agency or PAMI since August 2016. NTFRB notes that the statement given by Attorney Eve Gonzalez during the Senate hearing is not true. For us, Uber lied. The LTFRB says Uber Company is now a member of the UCPB General Auto Passenger Insurance, which only has limited insurance coverage for passengers. It adds that Uber's insurance does not cover fault of indemnity and the all-risk package. This means that if a public utility vehicle that figured in an accident went out of line or the driver is under the influence of alcohol or drugs, the passenger will not be able to claim anything from the insurance company. A passenger will only be entitled for an insurance claim if the Uber car driver is not directly at fault. Uber passengers express dismay over this information. Hindi yun kasalanan ng, uh, ng driver or ng pasero, but it is a responsibility kasi ng Uber or Grab na ibigay yung insurance ng pasero. Kailangan sagot nila lahat. Bago nila pagkakitaan yung tao, kailangan yung safety ng tao, kailangan sagot nila yun. 
under LTFRB Memorandum Order 2015-28 or the 3-Year Enhanced Personal Passenger Accident Insurance Program. The family of a passenger who died in an accident should receive 200,000 pesos as that benefit. A passenger who gets injured or becomes disabled as a result of a vehicular accident should receive 5,000 to 100,000 pesos. Ito yung hinahabol namin, the safety of the riding public. Sana maintindihan ng mga tao ito. The LTFRB reiterates that Uber company must obey and cooperate with the agency so that the rules and regulations for TNVS operations will be finalized the soonest possible time. Joa Nano, UNC News and Rescue, Quezon City. Next on Wine News. Excavation begins on alleged mass grave of the Parahinog family in Ozami City. Authorities arrested a suspected NPA bomb expert in Bukidnon. And President Rodrigo Duterte signs into law the anti-hospital deposit bill. Why News will be right back. Meanwhile, delegates for tomorrow's ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting have started to arrive in the country. Among the first batch of arrivals are the foreign ministers of Turkey and Myanmar. Meanwhile, a welcome dinner hosted by Foreign Affairs Secretary Alan Peter Cayetano was set up for all delegates. Tomorrow, all ministers will convene for a plenary session where they are expected to launch the ASEAN Institute for Peace and reconciliation, publication, and discuss pertinent issues, particularly North Korea's missile tests. In connection to the issue, Cayetano revealed that some ministers are calling to remove North Korea from the regional bloc. The secretary believes such a call is unlikely possible because ASEAN has no provision regarding expulsion of its members. On August 8, 50 ASEAN landmarks which served as venues for the different ASEAN meetings and activities nationwide will be simultaneously lit. Included in this historical simultaneous lighting is the venue in Iloilo City. They chose Iloilo uh, because, of course, we hosted two of the senior officials' meetings. And we have been the venue for uh, big conventions na since APEC, since 2015. The lantern called ASEAN Landmark is designed by the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. It is made of fiberglass adorned with lights, anahaw leaves, and some pagita flowers and is handcrafted by the inmates of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology or BJMP. The, the ASEAN Landmark will be hung in front of the Iloilo Convention Center where several ASEAN meetings were held. Cops visited a barangay in Ozamis, which was believed to be the area where the Parahuinogs bury the dead bodies of their victims. Victor Cusare will tell us why. The Osamis police has begun the excavation earlier on the alleged mass grave of victims of the Parohinog family in Purukwan, Barangay Kogon, Osamis City. Barangay Chairman Leonardo Makairan of Barangay Kogon says several residents reported to her the foul smell coming from the said area. Hindi ko alam kung mayroon bang itinapon dyan na tao. Ang ako lang narinig sa mga residente dito na mayroong mabaho sa hangin. Hindi nila makita na mayroong tinapon na tao. Because of this, Makairan ordered the filling of the well with soil. Police Chief Inspector Jovi Espinido says the parohinogs used to dump the remains of the victims in the said well. So yun talaga ang lagyan niya pagka yung biktima ng rabiri, or madalhin nila dito na walang mga hindi taga rito, magdududa sila na asit ng gobyerno, ng intelligence, so doon na, doon dito na ilagay. Yung mga biktima nila, dadalhin dito, dudahan nila kung sino ka, hindi ka, ma, hindi ka hindi malaman kung saan yung address mo, dadalhin ka dito. Pati yung tao nila, basta dudahan nila, dito na. 
After excavating the well and another suspected mass grave using a backhoe, authorities found no human remains. They have yet to determine if the remains were placed on a sack or there is a need to examine the excavated soil. Residents of the said area say the well is 60 feet deep. Espinido adds that aside from Barangay Kogon, there is another area that served as Parohinog's mass grave. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice already filed multiple charges against the Parohinog siblings Nova Princess and Reynaldo. The DOJ sees probable cause to file them with illegal possession of firearms and ammunition and possession of dangerous drugs charges. Reynaldo will also face illegal possession of explosives charges after bombs were found in his house during a raid. The DOJ says the siblings are not allowed to own any kind of firearms, but high-caliber firearms were still found in their possession. Shabu were also found at their house during the police raid. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Meanwhile, the Department of Justice or DOJ has placed Osami City Councilor Ricardo Parohinog alias Arthur Parohinog on the Immigration Lookout Bulletin to prevent him from fleeing the country. The councilor is one of the subjects of the search warrant which the PNP CIDG Region 10 served to members of the Parohinog family last Sunday. He was not home when authorities conducted the search, but several firearms and ammunition were found in his house. According to the DOJ, he is currently under investigation and there is a strong possibility he will attempt to place himself beyond the reach of legal process, prompting the issuance of the Lookout Bulletin order. And the Philippine National Police CIDG anti Transnational Crime Unit raided a house in Carisa Homes in Tansa, Cavite at around 6 in the morning today. Mon Hoxon tells us why. PNP CIDG Anti-Transnational Crime Unit conducted an operation today in Cavite that targeted a man who hid high-caliber firearms and ammunitions. Authorities arrested the suspect, Rogelio Bargoso Itabanao, a 44-year-old resident of the said subdivision. Operatives seized an AK-47, a 12-gauge shotgun, and 45 caliber gun and ammunition. The suspect says he's into a trucking business and that someone had just offered him firearms. Before kasi pwedeng may nag-offer sa akin na pwede naman bumili. So bumili at saka yung akin namang area, remote area. Under threat ka ba? May... Mula naman sir. Actually, simula na nabili ko yan, hindi ko pa nailabas sa bahay yan. The raid was in accordance with a search warrant issued by the executive judge of the Regional Trial Court of San Pablo, Laguna following information from an informant. Merong kasing report na nakarating sa PNP na merong mga... Uh, na, Iniingat ang mga hindi lisensyadong baril. Di umano ang suspect. Kaya based doon sa validation, uh, meron nga mga baril. No? Kaya nag-apply ng sersuara ng CIDG sa San Pablo. Authorities will file three counts of violation of the Republic Act 10591 or the Comprehensive Law on Firearms and Ammunitions against the suspect. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krami. In other news, Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre has directed the National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, to conduct a parallel probe into the arrest of prison guard Juan Ernesto Diong Lai Jr. yesterday morning. A large plastic sachet containing about 100 grams of shabu was confiscated from the prison guard upon inspection by PNP staff personnel at the entrance of maximum security compound in the new Bilibid prison. The suspect is currently detained at the Muntinlupa City Police Station and is facing charges for possession of illegal drugs. Aguirre says they will not tolerate and will surely punish such offenses of their personnel. Senator Sonny Angara might push for amendments in the provision of the law on balikbayan boxes in the event, he says, the Department of Finance refuses to correctly interpret it. Nel Maribuhok tells us why. Senate Committee on Ways and Means Chairperson Sani Angara does not agree with the Department of Finance or DOF's interpretation of several provisions of the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act. 
The senator says based on the implementing rules and regulations for the provision on the duty and tax-free balikbayan boxes, goods carried by a balikbayan box should be limited to only 150,000 pesos yearly for it to be exempted from taxes. Ang interpretasyon po ng Department of Finance is isang beses mo lang pwedeng i-avail yan. Kung i-avail mo na three times, kailangan within the limit ka of 150,000 which is not the intention of the uh -huh. law. The senator clarifies that the real intention of the law is to allow Filipinos abroad to deliver up to three packages worth 150,000 pesos each every year to their families in the Philippines. This means that a Filipino overseas worker can send packages containing goods worth up to 450,000 pesos yearly. And if what he claims as wrong interpretation of the law continues, he would push for its amendment. Sa lingwahe din, eh kung talagang magbatigas ang, uh, ang uh, executive sa kanilang interpretation, we might have to do an amendment. Mm. Meanwhile, on the illegal entry of 6.4 billion pesos worth of shabu shipment in the country, Angara says the Bureau of Customs or BOC has clearly committed neglect. May valid point ang PIDEA dahil uh, under the drugs law, talagang kailangan involved sila sa walang adulteration of the evidence. Eh. Mm. Ang nangyari, tin pinasukan ng customs yung warehouse, mga dumaan yung walong oras bago tinawagan yung PIDEAS. Up to this moment, the senator says he's still waiting for an explanation from Customs Commissioner Nicanor Faildon regarding the issue. Nel Baribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. President Rodrigo Duterte signs into law the anti-hospital deposit bill. Under this law, stiffer penalties will be meted out to hospitals and clinics who ask for deposits and will deny treatment to patients in emergency cases and with serious diseases. Medical practitioners in hospital or medical clinic personnel who will violate the law will be penalized with imprisonment of not less than six months and one day and will be fined with 100 to 200,000 pesos. Coming up... Blameable cladding blamed in the massive fire that engulfed 86-story torch tower in Dubai. The Wildlife Conservation Society crushed more than two tons of elephant tusks in New York to curb illegal ivory trade. And gourmands snap up oysters at a vending machine in France. More from Y News after this break. hopefuls from northern Philippines to get the final chance to be part of the very first season of Wish Covering. Leslie Longboen tells us why. It's been almost two months of search for the next online singing sensation. And now we are down to the last Wish Covering on ground edition here in the city of Pines, Baguio City. Additionees who wowed the crowd is 26 year old property consultant Roja Malin Adolfo. Roja joins the competition not only because of her dream. that singing is a, a way for me to touch other people's lives. So as much as possible, I have to give my all for the audience. Meanwhile, a fresh graduate from Nueva Vizcaya also tried his luck in the competition. Mark Lester traveled four hours to make it to the last Wishcovery on Ground Edition. Important po kasi sa, talaga sa akin ang pagkanta. Kaya ngayong graduate na po ako, uh, gusto ko po ma-experience uh, kung ano naman po ang mundo ng musika. 1,000 
500 singing hopefuls took the chance to be discovered through the 14 legs of Discovery on ground auditions. This is apart from those who submitted their audition piece online. The pre qualifiers will move to the next round where they will have a chance to sing inside the Wish 1075 booth. Leslie Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Baguio City. Do you eat oysters, Will? Yes, I do. Actually, fresh in that state, or fresh rock pepper? and uh, uh, baked, mm. and uh, yung the oyster cake also. Oyster cake. How about you, Darlene? Yeah, as of course. <laughs> you eat oysters. Yeah. They are a good source of uh, zinc. Interesting. Thanks, pops. <laughs> anyway, happy weekend to all of you out there. See you next week. And those are the reasons behind the news. July 4, 2017. I'm Angelo Castro III. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo. And I'm Darlene Basingan because we need to know. We will always ask why. Thank you for watching. Why, why News? news?